Name another podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gon' do it how you want it. Boss talk. Yeah, everybody on it. Boss talk. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official, Miss Jamaica. Wait. <laughs> well, going, you know, my dad. I want y'all to stop what y'all doing right now at this moment and go ahead and like, subscribe, follow, share all our content everywhere. Anywhere you can type in Boss Talk Podcast 101, we are there. I mean, you know, our Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, YouTube, TikTok, you, threads, you name it, we're on it. But I want you to definitely, if you want to see our full length interviews, go check it out on our YouTube membership. Go ahead and subscribe, follow, purchase that, you know, small donation type of thing, but go ahead and do it just to show your support because we love y'all for supporting us. Thank you in advance. Wow, man. Hey, man, listen, man. Make sure you do what she said, man. Let's do what we got to do to make sure Boss Talk 101 stay pushing up the way we keep doing, man. Listen, we got a guy in here today don't need no introduction, man. This guy right here, he's uh one of the guys, man, that I met, man, he be on that stage. You know what I'm saying? When you think about all the other guys that been on that stage, I done seen everybody from uh, Chico Bean, Country Wayne, uh, all of these different comedians, uh, Jesse McDonald, um, Myron, cheating ass Myron, my guys, Face on Love. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I done seen all of these guys. What's that boy, Hook the Comedian, mm -hmm. Eddie Griffin. And I ran into JB, man. It been something real serious and different, man. Yes, What's going on, What's JB? Up, man, I can't complain, man. JB is off of, man, listen, man. We we still on a high from last night. You see, we got the Bubba Dub shirts on. Everybody wearing the Bubba Dub shirt. Yes, Shout out yeah, Bubba yeah, Dub. Yeah, yeah. Last I love night. Love the new design. Hey. The new last design night. Last night was serious. Last night, nigga. Man, listen, I was so proud, man, just to be a part of that whole movement, man. You guys smashed it. I remember when I came. A while back, when we had first y'all filled up the one in yeah, uh, Arlington. in Arlington, and 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 man, you know it was a serious one because that was the first one where I want to say first I, full it was sold out show, show that and what I loved about it the fact that Bubba Dub got emotional about it. Correct, and D. Ellis, I think he was the one yes. pretty much doing hosting, the MC and, and hosting right. that and night. That bitch was on the Sunday, man. Yes. You know what I'm talking about? But y'all killed it, man. Like I said, but. You can see the progress from last mm -hmm. night, uh, the way you got, and it wasn't the same jokes. Mm -hmm. Everything mm -hmm. was totally different. These mm -hmm. guys are different, man. To be honest with you, when I had Black Ron on here, he said there are some comedians that, and we ain't gonna say no names, that really don't want to be in the room with certain other comedians because they don't want to lose their shine man. because these niggas is shining, man. The light is bright. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for coming on the Thank show. Thank you for having me. Man, and I, I, we want to get all the way into it. Yeah, I want to go all the way into who this guy is, let the people know what's going down. Yes, sir. Yeah, because when I listen to your jokes, you talk about country living. Yeah. So, I mean, definitely. you're from the country. I'm from the country, the deep woods. What part of the country are you from? Well, I'm really from Santuck. I was born in Montgomery, Alabama. Mm -hmm. Pretty much, that's where the hospital's at. So, you got to go right. all to Montgomery. But How was, far is that from Montgomery? Probably about 35, 40 minutes. Okay. Almost an hour. Okay. From Montgomery. How country is it? Shit, niggas still got well water. You know, niggas still picking peas where I'm from for a living. So really? it's country, yeah. It's country, man. So people still do stuff the old fashioned way, you know. So I like but it like that. Though. It ain't that country because when I think hear about country, I hear about um you said well water, so they don't have no septic coming to their houses. They got septic. Some of them do. Some of them still got our houses. Yeah, because that's what I'm saying. Country is when you ain't got that septic running still, in there. Still got them. Still dirt roads in 2023. Like, oh, okay. Real dirt roads. Like, wow. shit crazy. Now, like, so when you were coming up, man, I know being down in the country like that, what's the main thing that you remember? You know, is that red dirt? Red dirt, like red clay. Yeah. Like rain, yeah. 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 What was what was different about you, your, your coming up, you feel, that other people didn't experience? Man, I had love when I grew up. I'm the only boy out of six. Wow. Mm. On the middle. On the third out of six. So, just so you spoiled broke. rotten. I ain't going to say spoiled rotten. I just, I ain't going to say spoiled, but <laughs> just grew up around love, man. Just learn to mean the love because some people grew up off survival, but I can peep that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Then being around women, different personalities, I can just peep things when it comes to people trying to trying to get it up on me. Was daddy Especially around? Women. No, I ain't had no dad around, but I know my dad, but he wasn't around. He wasn't around? Nah. When was the first time you met him? I knew my dad up until the age of nine. Oh, all of yeah, nine, yeah. then he stepped out. Yeah, stepped out. Um, how long did you did it take for you to see him again after that? Man, my dad is still alive. I barely see my dad. I'm, I'm living my life. I can't 
chase you down, you ain't chase me down. So mm-hmm. ain't no hard feelings. It's just like once a man get past a certain age, you can't be dependent looking for no daddy. You know what I'm saying? So that's real. I'm on. on. You say it wasn't no hard feelings, but as a kid though, when you know maybe I just watched too much movies because I was never placed in that situation. My mom and dad was in the household together, so I cannot tell anybody I know exactly how it feels. Now everything everything I don't like about my dad is what he showed me what I didn't like about him. Like with lying mm-hmm. to me, standing me up, showing me, telling me gonna come get me and don't. Like ain't nobody. So as a child, you didn't you. you didn't like him. I ain't gonna say I didn't like him. I was just like I thought someone wrote me kind of swinging the scenes, and I had to think about hold See, on. See, that's the part you. I was looking it for. It ain't you. It's him. So like you can't see. Let that JB, hold you, you up. sure you wasn't emotional because you grew up around all women? No, I mean I was around don't, my granddad. Don't, don't try to play me, man. I was around my granddad you know Coon and my uncles a lot. <laughs> So I, I was around my uncles and my granddad a lot. So that was a good thing about it too. You know, so, so you did have yeah, male so, yeah, figures around. Right? Different, all type of niggas. See, that's the part I was looking for yeah, because so. when I started saying that, you know, I watch a lot of movies and I get certain things from movies because when I watch movies and you talk about the father leaving and stuff like that, it, th- it shows the child always feeling like it was my fault why you left. I they had, always I feel that type of way. uncles and my granddad and them too. So like I said, I always had somebody there. So, so you had the male role yeah, models. Yeah, they, they kept me busy too, doing all type of stuff. I started pouring concrete probably about three years old. Hey. For real. Drank a beer too. <laughs> Let them tell it. Wow. So when did you really think that you had a funny bone in your body that you could tell some jokes? I've always been funny. Let everybody else tell. I just tell them. I just be myself. You know, it come up, it come out. But like really, when I really realized it, like I said, I was in the Marine Corps. Did they use in the Marines? And wait a minute, wait a minute. You you came out of school and just say I'm going to the Marines. Or you I was just- gonna go play ball. I had a full ride to Southern Mississippi. Basketball, football. Football. Yeah, I had a full What ride. position? Uh, safety. Were you good? Keep return permit. I was pretty decent. Yeah, I was pretty high. I ain't gonna just say that. But I let the people that's watching this let them chime in. Y'all, y'all tell them how it was. Like, I was him. Yeah, back but, in my day. And, and so you decided, now nah, I'm gonna just go to Marine. Yeah, I'm like, I'm thinking about the long haul. If I get hurt in college, I ain't gonna get no check. Like I can get in the military. That's right. You know real. what I'm saying? The rest of my life, I'm gonna get the education regardless. You know what I'm saying? That I'm makes gonna learn sense. things. I'm gonna see the world. But who you knew that was in the Marines? Well, my or? whole family. I'm just the first That's Marine, why. yeah, so it's like my uncles, So they were a military? Yeah, they blazed the trail. I come from a military family. Okay. So they blazed the trail with military, just seeing what I can get, just being in the military. So why Marines over the Army? Just wanted to be different. I had already had uncles already on me, Air Force, mm-hmm. Navy, something like, I just wanted to be different. I wanted a challenge, so I joined mm-hmm. the Marine Corps. Okay. So what's the difference, though, with the Marine? Like, Boot who's camp, tougher? Like 12 weeks. You only get two phone calls. You let, them, you let your folks know when you're getting there and let them know when you graduate. Mm. Ain't no in-between weekends off. Your ass training. Is one harder training-wise yeah, than the is, other? Yeah, yeah, it's like no days off. Like, they can really beat you up at the Marine Corps, the old Marine Corps anyway. Mm. I don't know about the new Marine Corps. I've been out about 17 years. So. How long you been in? How long were you in there for? I did eight years in. Eight years? I did eight years. Why did you come out? I got a little trouble mm-hmm. in the military. Got an admin sept, made CNN. What's that? Admin sept. Mm-hmm. They administratively uh, kicked me out. Well, for what? Being a nigga. <laughs> what did fun. you do? I got uh, accused of rape, robbing, kidnapping in Japan. Hold on, yeah. hold on. Yeah. In, Japan? Rape? Yeah, in Japan? Hold on, rape, robbing, and, and kid. Yeah, I was 25. How that happened? What Shit, happened? Who's out? On a night in Japan in Hiroshima, where they okay. in the Pearl Harbor, shit, we uh-huh. got bomb, and we was out, me and uh, three other Marines, and one was getting ready to retire in two days. And a chick I picked up, just been a player. I been to Wolf about two years, and picked the chick up in the club, went out, had a good time on the town, and shit, we was in the parking lot doing our thing. And she go with us and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Then when she get caught by the police or whatnot, I get And she's turkey. a native? Yeah, okay. a local. Local. And she said she was raped, robbed, and kidnapped. She gave like 14 different statements. Before it came out, it was a lie. And Marine Corps still tried to prosecute But I beat him. I was facing 99 years without a possibility of parole. So wow. I'm a living testimony, man. Like, you can't tell me God And you good. beat it. Beat it. Wow. wow. Did you go before a jury? Man, I, went, I went for a whole court martial. Judge and everything. They, they got mad at me because I wouldn't testify against other Marines. I'm like, I can't do that. I can't testify against some shit I know they didn't do. I know I broke the rules and broke the curfew, but the other shit, come on, cuz. Did all of them get off? All of them beat it. Oh, okay, that's good. Yeah. All those good. Wow. So you you then like once And they you, still boot you out. Even yeah. after yeah, you beat yeah. it. And I was yeah. You would think they strip me down my rank and everything. You would think that as long as you beat it, that you'd be that good. Was, that was an international incident. I was all on CNN and they said, Yeah, that shit you can Google that shit. It's gonna pop up. Mm. And you were cool to Japan. Wow. Yeah, man. So 
I, I I think the the main thing is God already have a plan. Most definitely. We we think we walk in and we get doing this and doing that, but God has an ultimate plan that you gonna make it through and get to. For real. And I think a lot of times people put that that thought in their mind, oh, I'm doing this, I'm gonna go over here, I'm doing that. God is the one controlling exactly. the, the whole thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's something that, so when you go through these trials and testimony, he preparing you for something else so Way that later do. on in life, right. you'll be able to talk to and speak to certain situations. That may be a cat that been in the military that faced some situation. You can tell him, hey, man, don't do this, or it's a chance you could beat that, man. Don't just fold over for exactly. this. You see what I'm saying? And exactly. that's the stuff that I think a lot of times people don't realize. Like, you go through something just so that you could help others to get through it as mm -hmm. well, you know? Most so, well, man, that's, that's big. Well, my question after that is, um, does that affect you when you come when you come out into the real world trying to get a job? Does oh, that affect you? I'm retired now. They pay no, me. I know. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you didn't have to work again nah, after that. I'm a comeback uh, veteran. I did three tours in Iraq. So okay, they, they so out they out they didn't take away all of they that. They take, can't they take, take that shit. shit oh, even when they boot you out, they nah, still can't, can't take, take all of that unless you just do some just catastrophically stupid. Okay, so I stay out the way. I'm on the road doing company, doing what I love. Just my therapist. So. Wow. I know that. Yeah. Um, you're on the road doing comedy, but it wasn't always you was on the road doing comedy. You were somewhere and you probably were cracking jokes. Yeah, nigga, you know what I'm saying? Your mama. Ranking. Your, mom, your yeah. mama this, your mama that. Yeah, your mama, nigga. Yeah. So did how, how, did, how, did, how did you first get in, know that you had a a, 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 niche, a niche for comedy? I don't know, just being around people. People be joking. They try, they try to joke with me a lot in school. And I keep them off of me. That's how I really learned how to really joke. People try and joke with me. They think, oh, he the little guy. We're going to joke on him. And when I start joking, you think I'm 10 feet because I ain't coming up off your head. <laughs> and I didn't want to fight. So I had to fight too, so. Yeah. yeah. But after you came out of the military, how long did it take you before you jumped into comedy? I jumped right in. like As soon somebody, as you came yeah, back? somebody had betted me in L.A. I got booed in L.A. Okay. Some what in happened? LA. I got, nigga had betted me $50. I bet you won't get on the stage. So I'm Brad. Well, I ain't got nothing to lose. Nigga, yeah, I get on stage and get that money. I ain't everybody in the military told me I was funny in my unit. People I was around, oh, you're funny, bro. As well, you shit. Them motherfuckers ain't think I was funny. Boo! <laughs> what did you say? What was I don't the, know what the hell I said. You was, that, that, was you that, drunk? I was drunk as a bitch, man. <laughs> that was it. I got the fifty dollar though. That was my ride home through the cab. But <laughs> for real, man, you I started in time. California. Yeah. How did you feel? I was like, damn, I can't believe I got booed. I said, shit, I'm finna go work on this shit. And mm -hmm. went home to Montgomery, Alabama, and jumped in the head first. And it got with a comedy crew called uh, Mr. Grind's Comedy Crew. Mm -hmm. And we were doing views like a million a month just mm. on YouTube and world stuff. Wow. You know what I'm saying? The shit, man. That didn't work out. Like I said, I was going back and forth on the Greyhound to the Improv up here on Tuesdays in Arlington on the open mics on the Greyhound bus, man, hustling up bread. Not no home to get home. How old were you at that time? About 27, 28. Okay, so you started comedy late. Yeah. Okay. Started late. But there's no age cap on comedy, though. No, you can yeah, start comedy really, anytime. Yeah. I told him I got myself together, man, where I ain't got to work now, so I can really focus on comedy now. So yeah. I did the back end on the front end. So you you start doing your comedy there. Now, now where's the next place that you end up at? And when you in, and where'd you, where's the next stage you get up on and you know, like, I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot? Man, that's the spot we had in Montgomery, Alabama. They tore it down. That was like my gym. I worked out at that place called The Owner's Box, The Seventh Flow. Shout out to Champ, man. Uh, Every Saturday, we have comedy shows up there. I started like the, the guy on the low, on low guy on the totem pole. Going first, work my way up, then being the headliner and stuff like that to do my own shows at that place, man. And they tore that place down. It kind of hurt me a little bit, but I'm like, I'm ready to go do this thing. And then I decided to move to Texas. Wow. And you moved to Texas. Now, Now let's talk about, because you have a special relationship with Dion Neum, right? Dion yeah. Sanders and uh, uh, Junior, you know, Dion Junior. Yeah, Junior, Junior, the boy that I met up in Vegas to try and sell me them clothes. I like him. But anyway, like, like now he dealing with the camera. They got him mm -hmm. out there doing yeah. So let's let's talk about that for a minute. Like, how did you end up, was it because you was a cornerback, or how did you end up dealing with Dion Neal? That's crazy about that. I wound up dealing with Junior, the power of social media. Really? On Twitter. Oh, okay. Yeah, like niggas uh, talking about, you know, you like the hood donuts. I don't want the donut for Dane in the white box. So him and Pops, Pops respond, how you gonna be talking about you gonna donut us in the white box? You got a trust fund. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> that was the dad's yeah, <laughs> On Twitter. So I stole the shit pack. Oh, I see what they got going on. He said, you well off ever. 
And I seen the clothing line, I'm like, my lad named Brad, well, I like Pops, but I want, I want to work with Junior. Build something, build something together with him, make it strong. I'm like, Pops already got that going. He got mm -hmm. his crew. I want to do something with Junior. Reached out to him. Hey, man, I got my own car, clothes, money, hoes, and everything, bro. I want to be a part of something great. What's up? I can move to Dallas next week. He said, move, shit, I was gone by Monday. Wow. <laughs> So that's how you end up in, in Dallas. Dallas. Yeah. You reaching out to Dion Jr. Yep. That's big. Started, like. started as brand ambassador. Every time something dropped, I buy every color what he had out of my pocket. Didn't matter mm. what it was. Wow. That's Bought dope. everything. You know what I'm saying? Then after that, you're like, your money ain't no good no more. Instead of being an ambassador, I'm finna make you partner. Wow. I'm around with a sense. But that's so crazy because when you think about a brand ambassador, the ones that I see on Instagram and stuff like that, because you say you buy all of that out of your pocket, all these brand ambassadors. In today's society, they expect to get something exactly. for free. I had to work up to that. You that understand what I mean? No, but when you see them, they just coming up. Exactly. They, they just think that that's what brand exactly. ambassadors do. For the main fact, you're saying that you bought it all. Yeah, I, I, that's totally different. I should have so I can invest, bro, to be inv invested. With I like you know, that. So I, I, I want to ask you, like, what did what, what did you see in Dion Jr. being that he's so overshadowed by his father? Meaning his father do his father. Yeah. You can't get around no lights. I just, mm -hmm. I just, you, see, me? you yeah, can't I, get around the damn lights because the nigga just, the nigga, you know, everything he do, he the best to the do best it ever. He's he great. He do it at, For at, me, at an elite level. Dion is the best ever Most to definitely. do it. Period. But I'm just saying, how, what do you see in his son that make you know that there's something special there? For one, no cap. His work ethic, for one, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's hard to beat somebody that ain't gonna quit. About like me. And then, like, shit, it's hard to really give with somebody. And somebody generally give you a chance. He generally gave me a chance. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot of people don't really do that. When you first see him and you meet him and you get up here, what what what's the conversation like when you first? Oh, shit. When I first got here, they had a welcome party for me. What? Yeah. No. When I first got here. Who the had... hell was at this welcome shit, party? it was his mama's birthday. Mama C birthday, DeAndre birthday. Shit, it was lit. We was at the, uh, I'll never forget the red jacket. Mm -hmm. Lit. Set out and everything. They gave me a shout out and everything. Welcome, Belma, the Texas, all type of shit. But the crazy part, somebody busted into my truck the morning before. Okay. So it's kind of like, I ain't worried about that shit. I get that fixed. I got insurance. But they turned it out for him, set it out for him. And they just embraced you. That's embraced God, man. That's yeah, favor, man. Yep. Felt like family after that. Yeah, we've been family since. Favor ain't fair. I'm it telling ain't. you, for you, everybody can't get on Twitter and link up with the Sanders like that. Bro. You're right. They That's did their big. background check on me, too. They told me they, they, they did, did their background check. Yeah. How, how did they do it? Oh, man, I don't know how they did it, but. They knew they, they, they knew they, somebody they, they that knew, knew you that knew you was good people. They knew all that shit, so. They you have to know all of that before you welcome somebody into your family. Oh, wow. And yeah. so, and you say what sticks out to him is he just don't quit. Because I'm going to tell you now, and, and I always tell him this. I told him this when I seen him down there at the club. Because I, I yeah. ran into him. You, he wasn't with him, was no, he? No, not the next time. No, nah, we, 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 it was me and my it wife. It was another time. Yeah. And I, I had met him in Vegas, Junior. Yeah, he was at the convention. Yeah, and I told him up there, your dad is, is a football player. I can't see how I'm going to buy clothes from you. I really did tell him this, and I didn't believe him at first because you don't think, you like, okay, you little son ain't going to really, I ain't paying him too much attention. Yeah. Then fast forward to now and see him still dealing with from the GOAT brand, all that stuff. Well off. Well, just just steadily being consistent at at, yeah. at, at, at motivating mm -hmm. and driving himself. And then to be a, a family, like he's a team player. Mm -hmm. Like he's out there with the camera. He figures out a way to be dynamic in whatever source that Dion them had got going exactly. on. And I think that's 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 powerful, man. Most definitely. Because it's tough on kids trying to come up under a shadow when they, when their parents, you know, you see that uh, hip hop, the kids. Yeah, yeah hip hop. What's, kids. Name, mm -hmm. what's the name of that show? Growing It'd be, up Hollywood, or something like that. Yeah, yeah growing yeah, up yeah, hip hop right or something. Like, like when you see those kids, a lot of time it's a struggle. I mean, I deal with a lot of different ones, like from uh, Little Soldier Slim. Um, I deal with uh, Shorty Low Junior, uh, and there's a, a few more, like who fathers, yeah. you know, no, uh, passed away or, or 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 you know what I mean, or that was famous and stuff and. And it's just, you see them, it's something special in those kids, man, because they having to be out here in the, in the shadows of their parents. Exactly. They, you know, and it's crazy, but for them, I, I just always seen that as, okay, Dion a hell of a father to even stick it you stick it through and have them. Boy. I didn't know that other boy was still playing. I think he too old to be in college yeah, he ball. Yeah, he's a grad. He already he grad out? Transfer. He graduated, but he's a grad transfer. What does that mean? Uh, graduate from school, get your degree. Yeah. And you have uh, your eligibility to play as a graduate. Really? Yeah. So this is last game? Yeah, yeah, last, last year? Last year, yeah. 
Do you think he gonna take it all away? Yeah, I think so. Going to the NFL? Yeah, he, he can trip. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he, he caught him one earlier yeah. this last game. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, somebody said he ain't have his daddy speed, but shit, that don't matter, he scored. He scored. He scored, yeah. so. Yeah, I, like I just say, it's always that big old Brian and Light yeah. where you, you know what I'm saying? How do you yeah. feel about them? And I'm going to get off, off off the Sanders in a minute, but how do you feel Colorado? You know, he left Jackson. They, they keep on rolling. You know what I'm saying? He had to get off down yeah. there. Like I said, I, I, I wasn't there, so I can't say. You know what I'm saying? It's beautiful to me. You know? Yeah, but. I love to see it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like, as far as going to Colorado yeah, just, and making that transition. Turning everything around and, and the positivity going on. I love that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I love that. Already. Well, we're going to get in back into the comedy now, but shout out to them. Yes, um, let's talk about it. Let's talk. So, um, okay, so after you traveling back and forth, because you're very motivated. Yes, you came here and you started dealing with that. Once you started dealing with that, did it take away from your comedy? Because you started had to try to invest in this yeah, brand. Did. I, I, I definitely put comedy down for a little bit. Right. He was like, when you got show? I said, man, I really am doing them. Exactly. Folks on the brand, well, off, got this going, but I do skits in between, you know what I'm saying, stuff like that. And in between with working with Junior, people would uh, pick me up, put me on their tools. Uh, Kerwin Claiborne did it for like a year. Then after that, I sat down for a little bit, went on tour again. Was that your first tour? Nah, I did. I did a lot of tours myself. What was your first My tour? My first tour was self-funded by myself. Okay. Uh, called Sex, Drugs, and Comedy. Mm. <laughs> yeah, man. I did that. Me and my cousin, uh, Fat Boy Swole. We okay. did that. And I ain't have a camera. I had a cell phone. Mm -hmm. And that shit looked pretty good for what it was back then. So I just kept rolling with it and just kept... Kept growing the brand. So when did you when did you decide to say okay, now well off is good. Let me go ahead and go. After me the and comedy. Junior, um, after me and Junior uh, come to grips with it, it's like you growing, bro. I'm growing. You know what I'm saying? I see what this doing. I'm like, shoot, bro. I'm still gonna be with you, but I can't be there with you right now. I got still. I got to live my dream too, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna see you at the top. How long ago was that? About three years. Three years. I've been to a dub since. Mm. Let's talk about that. My boy Bubba Dub, you know, he frequents the show. We was met down in Houston. We were down in New Orleans together. We was together yeah, we, last that was night. My birthday, we was in uh, New Orleans. Really? Yeah, that was I my didn't birthday. even know yeah, it. My birthday. You ain't say nothing. Last year, we were too late. But then you know, <laughs> I, was, I went to that little after get up yeah. with y'all. But I was like, man, you know, we older, so you yeah. know, I'm going to the room. Yeah, it was my birthday. I got to cut out on your dub, y'all. Kick it. We now, stay be too long. Be safe Everybody out left. here. Everybody yeah, be safe out here. No, because he was saying he was going down to. We went down to the court. That's right. We French quarter, yeah. so yeah, we didn't do that. We would, we, we yeah. ain't stay that long. <laughs> <laughs> like, but I knew y'all finna yeah. get rowdy. Yeah. I said, getting late, yeah. baby. We, we gotta get out of here. The young nigga going too long. Oh. Yeah, they finna cut up. <laughs> so I, said, I said, hey man, it's time to go. <laughs> the young nigga don't care nothing about nothing down here in New Orleans. Even yeah. a young boy down there. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's <laughs> right. mm -hmm. So we we so we I definitely enjoyed that down there. But so like. You hanging out with Bubba Dub? How did y'all even end up meeting? Like, like, what did you, like, how did y'all link? Me being the cameraman for Junior and everything else. Really? Shooting a skit. Ain't in it. Just playing my part, playing my role. What kind skit. of skit Bubba Dub doing? Uh, Junior got pulled over in the car with the police. Right? He had guns, dope, pills, everything. Dub said, "Damn, Junior, you got guns in the car. You got pills. You, you got tell it. shit. I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell the police, nigga, cause you gonna get." 40 years. That and was him. It was him. I said, I'll try my best not to laugh, but that was the skit. And after that, the uh, Jackson State thing was transpiring. I'm like, man, I, I want to go do my comedy thing. It was a mutual agreement. We'll see you at the top. Wow. Yeah, and so then you hit up Dub and Dub like, hit me up. Oh, he hit you really, up. Really, Dub? Why he hit me up? Okay. And they was looking for somebody that could hit the road with him that mm -hmm. could just up and go, ain't got nothing holding them back. And I emailed Dub probably about, about four months. Hey, man, I can... I'm, I'm a camera guy, woo 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 They ain't get back with me. Then when they called me, I went up, nigga, I been called y'all, nigga, goddamn shit. Yeah, yeah, I want to Sound wanna, like me. Yeah, I said, I been called y'all, nigga, hell. They said, well, we had to sort it out, see what we wanted. And you you the best candidate. When can you start, nigga? Nah. Now. Mm. Yeah, shit, ain't took a break. Ain't took wow. a break. Ain't took a break. I know it's just, it, it's fascinating to see how you guys rolling, man. Yeah, like, man. you guys from city to city, man. Like, I, I, I talked to Dub. He's like, man, I'm in Chicago, North Carolina. I'm over here. I'm over. We got, we got Cincinnati, oh, I, I, Cincinnati Cleveland, and Cleveland. Cleveland. Come back to back to back coming up. You see what I'm saying? Y'all everywhere, man. I, I gotta be exciting to be moving like that. Yeah, man. but I want to talk so. about the importance of speaking things into existence because earlier you were saying that when we saw you down there when we were looking at both looking at clothes and this was before you actually did the skit he bubba dub did the skit with junior, junior right yep and you were talking to e and you were like man yeah i want i want to do something yeah, with bubba dub. With this nigga bubba dub. right so that, that was that even before the skit yep. before you meeting him 
anything like that. And I, it's very important in speaking what you want into existence because don't think it's not gonna come through. I told my folks, I'm gonna example that. I told my sister, I'm gonna go broke for this shit. I damn near did. I was sleeping in my car. Wow. At one point. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, cause homeless. Like I said, say homeless. I asked them where to stay, but pride. Like y'all really don't think I could do this shit. Mm. And shit, now they see me, everybody love me. Now I got cousins I ain't know I had. Now, <laughs> I see you on the thing with Bubba Dub. You damn sure did, didn't you? Uh -huh. Do you have any children? I don't got no kids. No kids. Cause I know earlier you were saying that you were married before. Yeah, I'm glad I'm out of that, though. <laughs> it was tough, wasn't it? I ain't gonna say tough, man. She, she just wanted the right one for me. How long were you married for? Just a few years. Just two it years? It wasn't long. It wasn't long. Okay. Yeah, but, you know, at the end of the day, man, going back to the Bubba Dub deal, like, like you guys, y'all, y'all now, y'all moving. What, what is the most, um, what, what do you get from Bubba Dub? Just being you guys working together, Man, like you guys. I, I learned a lot from Bubba Dub. I sit around them, just took up everything. Like when somebody puts you in places and spaces that they ain't got to have you in, you got to just really take advantage of that, man. And he showed me that in Louisville, Kentucky. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't in the room with him and D.L. Hughley, but he said I got my guy J.B. out there. He up next. You know what I'm saying? Got look. Came, looked out there, and came and found me. Wow. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. Pretty cool, man. That's pretty cool. Yeah, like, how, that show that he ain't just, yeah. Yeah, not, not. But every time we have a show, he, he ain't like, it's my show. It's like, this our show. Yeah. That's why I ain't kill this thing. Wow. And before you even um, started working alongside with him, and you said you wanted to um, do business with Bubba Dub, why, why him? There's millions and millions of comedians everywhere. Just, he original. He doing stuff ain't been done before. Ever. Oh, that nigga snitch. I said, man, it can't be for real. He can't be told those many damn folks in a live round here today. I said, I like what he got going on. He from the country just like me. So just see hand in hand, just people to doubt you and don't believe in, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I said, I want to work with this guy. Wow. That's good. I think that's what, that's more, that's noble that you guys have figured it out. Like, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't. I've watched a lot of comedy shows, and a lot of times, you know, the flow, the way y'all yeah. flow, you know, you, it's not boring. It's not, everything is, you know, you, you're you anticipating the wait. You know what I mean? Sure. But it's a build up. It's oh, a yeah. build up. And I just enjoy it. Like I said, just sitting back, relaxing, and looking at the progress from the last time I seen y'all to now. Oh, yeah. You can see, and like I said, all the, wasn't none of the same jokes. It was straight up she just a tell them, whole man. different show. Give him a whole new flavor. A whole new flavor. Like, I mean, what do you, who who else do you you admire when it comes down to the comedy world? I like a lot of old comedians. I, don't, I really don't watch any other comedians like the new ones. Like, what like who? None of them. No, like no. what old oh, those, comedians? Uh, mm -hmm. Rudy Ray Moore, Richard Pryor, Red Fox, Eddie mm -hmm. Murphy. Yeah. Them the, kind of Robin Harris. Greats. Yeah, them. I Which like is them. your favorite out of all of them? Bernie My Mac. My favorite, Bernie Mac. You just had to, why are you trying to tell about him? To say that, Bernie, <laughs> Bernie Mac. That what, nigga used to talk What's your favorite you? joke? Bernie Mac? Yeah. The motherfucker joke. <laughs> I, I did not know what I tell you last night. The motherfucker joke. Tell me one. Bobby. Tell me one. one no, it's just, it's just, he I just can't, always, yeah. that joke. It's just, that joke just. Your boy bit off yeah, of him last yeah. night. What's his name? Uh, I forgot the name. No, I'm talking uh, the one that was on the show with y'all. Uh, uh, Piper. The hell, yeah, the hell. Yeah, he kept saying the hell. Yeah. I, I, what I tell you. He keeps I saying I said, I came from the motherfucker, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that joke that it can't but, be duplicated and the crazy part about it, he did it right there on the spot. Just mm -hmm. off the dome. Like off last night, I did a few off the dome. People talking to me. Like when I told a nigga, I said, I can't tell you that I ain't supposed to be up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That shit wasn't scripted. That's off the dome. Yeah, I ain't supposed to be up here, nigga. These that was hard. That was hard. Yeah. Sometimes I prefer those off the dome um, jokes better than some of the scripted ones. Because, yeah. And I can tell which one because this other guy who was up there, he did that um, because somebody's phone started ringing or something like that. He started making joke on them. But then when it was time for him to come back and go back to his other joke that he already started, he forgot where he, <laughs> he stopped. But then the crowd helped him out and yeah. told him exactly. But I like that. How hard is it when you go into a room and there ain't many people out there that you doing the show for, and you have to keep that keep that momentum up oh, and then keep your build up up? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You better be ready. Like I tell you, them, see what I'm saying? I tell niggas every show. It's a junk out there. I said, for one, they ain't come to see us. They come to see Bubba Dub. Them niggas ain't scared to tell you that. Nigga, we ain't come to see. We came to see Doug. Last they night, did they last did night. And before I went on stage, so I'm like, God. They did before they went. Oh, yeah, they did. So I'm like, I got to go. They been swinging and fighting tonight. Oh, you killed it. Wasn't you the next person? I yeah, was right 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 I'm like, that nigga on the fire heart. I got to fight every night to prove my love around <laughs> right, this motherfucker, man. But shit, it worked out. No, and yeah. the, niggas, the nigga that said, he said, well, I'm glad you went up there. That nigga. I ain't going to even say that, but yeah. you had to been there to see it. 
Yeah, yeah, it definitely was a. Uh, it was it was dope. I, it was live. I enjoyed it. I know. I'm I, when I see you go up, I'm excited. Oh yeah, because I know the whole. You know. You know it's about that time. Yeah, no, I just know the history. The, no, I just know the history. Most I'm watching the too. progress. You know what I'm saying? And and I'm proud that you. Sh I know you ain't up there for no reason. You hitting the stage every damn weekend, every day, sometimes. Yes, so I know you with practice and with going all the time, you're just gonna get better and better, yeah, like wine with time. But not only that, is it all of the other people who be on the show, don't always be on the show, but you're that one staple that always go everywhere exactly. with yep. him. He interchange with everybody else, yep. but you're always there. Exactly, that's a blessing too. That's a big blessing, man, that's like blessing. I said. and and. He saw me that trash, man. What did you say the first time you heard him come up with trash? Man. Like, where, where where was you at and what was you thinking? Man, it was, it was a pandemic. I was with Junior. We was making clothes. And we he said, Bama, look at this little nigga. I said, who is this? He said, nigga named Bubba Dog. I said, let me see the goddamn phone. Nigga said, trash. I said, this little nigga going to do something. So I got to work with this nigga. He going to do something. And shit, after that, shit just happened. Wow, that's I mean, crazy. Man, like I said, it'd be, it be tough. Got that record skits holding the damn phone, trying not to laugh at the nigga, man. Yeah, but yeah. But when I got to do one with him, it'd be tough not to laugh, man. But the shit be funny as hell. You've been turning up on the skits here lately. Got like, you've been doing a I lot gotta, more. Gotta keep up with and, I've been watching your page. Like, I would see, I said, man, he gonna, are you going to look at something and give your analogy? What the hell is that? Oh, yeah. I've got been to. watching gotta, you. Gotta, I say, he's finding, he finding his way in this world. I got a character right now I'm really doing called a Hoochie Man James. Okay. That, that one right there. He been really turning up. You know, he was born here in Dallas, Texas, so I keep everything played, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Goddamn you me and keep it Texas style with Hoochie Man. Wow. So. That's crazy, man. Like I said, how important. I remember him. He was in some shorts. Yeah, them, them little bit <laughs> shorts. Yeah, them little bit shorts. I remember them. With them boots. So, yeah, Hoochie Man. Was it cowboy boots yeah, or something? Yeah, he had something? a boot and a Jordan on when right, he first started out. But right. Hoochie Man got I remember a whole, that. He got a whole new ensemble. And that wig and the. And rings and everything. Yeah. Man, I, I, I like it, man. Like I said, you you one of them guys that people got to people gotta look out for. How many times do you think a person should post weekly or daily when he's dealing with being a co comedian? Or shit. content creator. That's not yeah. bro. Ain't no, ain't no days off with this content shit. Content creator, comedian, like like trying to make sure you stay in the, you know, and you want people to see you in your lane and in your element. And being an artist, you should be able to come up with new developing things exactly. on, a, on a weekly or daily basis that excludes the stage presence. How, e how hard is that being? Or is that easy? Or? No, I, I wouldn't say that. That's the hard part. The hard part is just staying consistent. Because so much is going on. Going, yeah, just keeping that shit going. That's the main part because you can post a good skit the day and do numbers and you think you take a day off another nigga finna come up and do the same thing wow. they gotta get your spot back yeah. so it's like I just keep going I ain't got no formula I just keep going and just keep doing it some gonna hit some gonna pop some gonna hit like fishing yeah some you just keep pop. swinging and throwing that thing yep. out there yep. all so the fishing bait yeah just keep going <laughs> keep working it being a comedian how important is it to keep your mental space a certain you gotta have that right right Man, that shit ain't right Man, you can go there and and just black out. I did it before. Play it off. What See, happened? How me, me in Baltimore? Uh-huh. Down there, got there and lost my damn mind up there, but the crowd didn't know. I'm like, what the fuck I'm going to say? Shit. Were well, you having this. a bad day or something I before? I had a bad day. I wasn't really, really, really where I needed to be. Mentally. Okay. Then I did with PTSD and all that shit. Mm -hmm. There ain't no excuse, though, but I went up there and went blank. But I got that shit together, though. I cut my set in half. And mm -hmm. shit, me and Bubba Doug talked about it. Since then, I've been a pit bull on that bitch. I ain't playing. I noticed uh -huh. you don't do any military jokes. I really don't want to talk about that. I got a whole goddamn book on that, though. I know you do. That's wait. why I'm like... I went on the, like, the, the big special where I could just talk about that. Really. Oh, okay. Do that really for the military. That's when hard. USO stuff. I like that. Just really get them that. You know, just, yeah. just let the world see who I am and then show on their military side. Yeah. Who have you seen outside of Bubba Dub that really have impressed you when it come down to comedy on the night where y'all went out and you just happened to be on the same card with them? Hmm. It don't even have to be somebody big. It can be somebody no, no, just, it's just anybody. anybody. It could be Dang. somebody big or somebody whatever. Mm. Like you went. That's a good question right there. Shit. We on a lot of stages. I know. With somebody a lot of people. who had you laughing like crazy. I'd say that guy from, uh, I forgot the nigga name. He in Jackson, though. With glasses. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. you can see him, huh? I can see him, but I can't think of his that, name. He was yeah, funny. Funny as hell. He, he had hosted uh, Chuckles down there for us in Jackson. Okay. Real funny guy. Real funny. Real funny, yeah. He's you, funny. You're like, and it, he had me and rolling. Because you, you don't run across it all the you time. You don't. He had, he had good energy from the from the start to the finish of the show. Really? He kept that thing going how it started. That's how that And I value finished. what you're saying because I know you see this in and night oh, yeah. you know, all day long. Yep. So. That nigga named Marco. Marco? I think. Uh, he wear glasses, got a little goatee, 
bald headed. Okay. He be with a he be with a fuck man. Memory fucked up right. Gotta now. Look Mind going up. blank right now. <laughs> <laughs> For real. No, because I, for some reason I always feel like okay because not all comedians host. But some comedians do host yeah. other people. And I feel like in order for you to, when you get a practice in hosting, it helps your comedy as well. Do you agree? You got to be a motherfucker to host. Because you can't go out there and just exactly. say the same thing. You got to keep the crowd going. You got to interact with everybody. Mm-hmm. And you got to know what you're doing. Wow. I got a story about that with Bubble Dub. He said, JB, we're going to switch it up tonight. You ain't performing. You hosting. Mm. I, had host, I had to host a Laurel. And no motherfucker wasn't playing. But I did that bitch, though. I did a good job. When you went out there, yeah, what you, out there, man, well, you didn't know, know how you were going to do it. That was your first time. Mississippi. What you say, coming to the stage? Them niggas said, we want Bubba. I said, he coming, God damn it, hold on. <laughs> and them motherfuckers got right. I just kept it from there. Wow, you, you kept, kept your jokes kept, rolling kept in the middle of it? Of this song. How many people did you bring up? Man, shit, I bought five people up. Wow, and you made that thing happen. made it work. Man. What's the hardest city? Laura was, i say, the hardest hosting. And I and I had uh, hosted uh, Memphis. We had did Chuckles. That's when they first gave me the chance. I was a cameraman. Yeah. They said, we, oh, you're a comedian? We're going to let you host. I hosted uh, in Chuggles in Memphis. Wow. I went from there, yeah. Man, I mean, you guys, man, like I said, y'all bring the city out. I seen everybody there from Yellow Bees, Baby. Who else was in there? It was, it was a bunch of people in there, man. A lot man. of them in there, man. Um, but those two stick out to me. Um, it's just something else to see, you know, the city come out for you guys. I see when y'all, when T.I., y'all, yeah, I see y'all know, with Tilt, you know everybody. what I'm saying? Uh, um, who else? Uh, just different play. Oh, Mike Epps. Yeah, Mike Epps. Like, I, I see people, you know, y'all link up, you go into these different places, and, and it's a good thing that all you guys have great chemistry together. It is a difference between oh, yeah. the, the comedians that were old, the older comedians yeah. you just uh, mentioned versus because they, they were doing hour, two hour two specials. Two hour specials, man. You Every remember night, that? Yeah, like, and the shit be crazy. <laughs> I don't remember watching them. I just remember listening to them on 8 track. Yeah, yeah. And my granddad and stuff like that. And that's the difference. Now, you 30 minutes maybe at man. tops. But the thing with Bubba, though, he can do an hour and a half. That nigga can go, can't okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm to the point that I can give you a good solid 45 to an hour. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so that's the crazy part about Having it. I was telling him last night, I said, I ain't get all my rocks off. Oh. I had a whole lot of more jokes to go. That's all but right, man. Courtesy to the other comedians in Florida show. Sometimes you got to cut it short. So Yeah. I, I mean, I love you guys, man. Like I said, I love you, JB. I want you guys to keep yes, killing sir. it like y'all been doing, man. Uh, top three comedians of all time, mm-hmm. dead or alive. Top three. Number one. Oh, Bubba Dub. Ooh, number two. Richard Pryor. Number three. Me. <laughs> wow, that's hard, man. man. I love it, man. So, man, hey, man, how can people get a hold of you if they trying to rock man, out? You can with? Google me. Jarrell Braswell, Big Brass, Comedian JB, The Real J Braswell, BDE Boys, uh, Team BDE. Y'all see what it is, man. Google Anyt- me. Anytime y'all come in, like, like Bubba, did, Bubba Dub did when he, he came early and I was able to get it out. Did you see when I put yeah. the... Post out just showing that y'all was gonna be at the uh, improv. We appreciate if that you guys, too. Like like when you guys come to town early or whatever, just stop through so I can get something out. Gotcha. So so we can put it out there so people can know from our page. Gotcha. And even if you come through town and doing a show, hit me up. Okay. We're gonna rock out at Boss Talk. You know okay. what I'm saying? Because that's what this for, man. People who really rock with us, man. We man, right. You know God put us together. Look okay. how it happened. It it in no way in ever we could have wrote that out to happen the way it did. We could have really? messed that we, up. We could have. We could have messed been that like, up. Yeah, fucking you. I don't know where you got it from. That's right. <laughs> it's, over there. It's, it's a lot of shit over there, man. It's a but lot God, of shit over there, cuz. Who would think that I met you and Bubba Dub at two different times? Two different times. And two different places. And at the end of the day, we all still oh, came right back together. Ain't that crazy? Mm-hmm. And the love you showed us when we got there, you said, yeah, man, that's boss talk, that's man. Ball, man. I don't so play shit, my boss talk. That these folks do. He my he people. Love us, these folks fuck with me. Like, I don't know about the rest of y'all, but I know they fuck with me. That's uh, right, man. Know about that, talking about. That, that was so much love, believe me, and when we noticed we it. We talked about that, we got back to the room last night. So you said I told him got the way boss talk got in here. You, <laughs> you told him that? Shit, you know? <laughs> Hey, G, you know what I mean? You got the way. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. man. We love you, JB. Love y'all, too. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, yes, where the bosses talk. And we out.